stuff. Well, um, Coach Zing's part of the Alaska crew, right? Absolutely. So, man, why don't you just talk to the people about your background, who you are, what you do, and then we'll dive into some of these questions. Okay. Uh, originally from a small town just outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, played my college baseball at Michigan State. Uh, after that, I played parts of 13 seasons professionally, uh, kind of all over the place, Canada, Mexico, independent ball, uh, affiliated ball. Um, now I run a place called Fuel Factory here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, basically work basically with a holistic approach, very similar to what you guys have been talking about all night. I think that's why we got along so well, but um, very blessed with what we get to do and uh, love helping all the way from little leaguers up to major leaguers. You know, it's, it's just as much fun for me, whether they're, they're younger or older. So, yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All right. Well, we appreciate that. So the question that popped in a while ago, uh, what was that? Was it, uh, it was about growing velocity? He said yes. that he, he kind of gave us his height and his weight and then said that he was at 90 miles an hour. He'd like to be at 95. Mm -hmm. I'm similar to you as far as your response. You know, it's like I need a lot more information than that. Mm -hmm. Like height and weight and velocity is just a, a fraction of what's going on. Um, a lot of times the first thing that I'm going to look at with a guy is his breath and then his movement. So a lot of times I see guys that are either early rotators or over rotators. So a lot of times we'll focus on stability with the lower half so that we can rotate with the upper half. Um, but that's also connected to the foundation of breath work. You know, we found that that's one of the most effective things from anywhere from a foundational guy, a young guy, or adding it to the routine of, a, let's say, a major leaguer. Gotcha. I'm going to try to talk about the, um, about the breathing thing. Are we talking like breathing from the diaphragm? Are we talking about three-dimensional breathing, a little bit of both? Or what, what exactly do you mean by the breathing? Oh, I mean, there's a lot of different breaths. Um, fire breath is one that we use. Um, a lot of this stuff comes from Shaolin, Tibet, Tao, um, some different martial arts stuff. Um, I'd say probably just to keep it simple right now, I'd say the biggest thing that we change is guys that either have like a linear breath, like a ah, mm -hmm. which kind of goes to the target but it's different than a lot of times we're going to teach more of a circular breath like a sa or a soup where it's soup, and it helps to focus the energy as well as it stops guys from thinking mechanically you know a lot of times we find these guys are obsessing over let's say they want to throw harder and somebody told them they needed to whatever something with their backside and they're focused so much on that backside it doesn't happen. Or if it happens, it happens slow, you know, because it's, it's really something where we want to get them to be instinctive. We want them to be in their natural, reflexive uh, action state. You know what I mean? So. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But then I think you could go into lifting or running, you know, you just see so many different things that guys do and they hold their breath and they're creating tension and they're, they're stopping the movement or they're separating themselves from what they're really trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we talked about this in um, Alaska, man. We, like uh, Coach Cam Texas said, we talked about it, and that balance is everything. That awareness is everything. You know, there's so much you can address before you even step on the mound, you know, before you even step in the weight room, <laughs> you know? Well, I like guys to jump rope. The first thing I'll do, whether they're whatever age they are, I'll, I'll hand them a jump rope. First thing we do is 50 jumps on two feet, 10 jumps on the right leg, 10 jumps on the left leg. And then I want to see them go right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. See if they can get a little rhythm, right? But yep. maintain the speed. Uh, then we go one, two, three, one, two, three. Then we do scissors. But it's something I've done for almost 20 years with guys. It, it allows me to assess them by watching them move. You know, you can see if the ankles are moving all over, if the feet are junked up, if the knees are caving, you know what I mean? Or maybe they're just super springy and you're like, wow, this kid's, yes. you know, you see all types, you know, but yeah. I think also I like to be straight up with them and it's like, I want to see you fail. I want to see how you react because the most of the times you see these guys are jumping and they'll kick the rope and what do they do? 
head falls, yeah. chest falls, posture falls. It's the same thing I see when they get to the mound and they miss their spot. They miss their spot. And everybody that could see them, like I'll, I'll watch the game and I'll watch just the pitcher. I don't see where the ball goes. I can tell if it's a ball or strike. And in, in my world, I like to teach them to be better than that, where it's like, hey, if, if the average major leaguer is missing his spot by this much and I'm not a major leaguer, and I miss a spot, then I'm going to act like I did it on purpose. I'm going to – we teach the three-second rule. I stay up for three seconds. You act as if you hit your spot, and then you go on from there. Now, it's harder harder to do it than to say it, for sure. But it starts with just the jump rope. Like you said, it's before they even pick up a ball. I can see, are they going to – are they going to be a beast with their body language? You know, or I say, are you a predator or are you the victim? Mm -hmm. Or prey? You know, not even just victim, but – but prey. It's like predator or prey. And that doesn't mean just the pitcher is the predator all the time and the, the hitter is the prey. That's not how that works, right? It's yeah. it's back and forth, and that's that chess game or cat and mouse that we just – we love to see. So, Man, when you talk about the jump rope and checking guys out, I was getting goosebumps, man, because I, I do that a lot, you know. You have – you might have your formal assessment. You do that. You take your notes, whatever. You mm -hmm. go down – in our case, you do your performance – analysis and then the pieces of the the pieces of the puzzle start to come together i love i love witnessing that you know you see a guy upstairs that you know had an asymmetry now he's down here running up oh, there it is <laughs> you know take him to the next drill up oh, there it is again you know I, I just i had i just love seeing that like i said the puzzle come together yeah and i think you can see it with simple moves too like just an anterior cone reach too right like put four cones out and see if they can change levels and see if they're they wobble or do they you know can they make a good level change and then are they stable enough to rotate in that level change you know a lot of times that's the one too that'll really help with the glute firing because a lot of times i'll first see guys and it's like they're they're too into their toes they're forward shifted their posture's off you know so initially just getting them to start to feel some proper glute firing you know yeah. and getting the whole foot involved, staying through the heel, that kind of stuff where, it, you know, just a lot. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So um, let's talk trends, and let's get your Nostradamus prediction after that. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, this is just through my lens, right? Everybody's got a little different lens. I am definitely more on the art side of, of the game. Uh, I'm very aware there's a lot of technology coming into the game. There's a lot of science-based whatever stuff you want to say. We use science. You know, we, we have the technology, the rep soto, the slow motion camera, that kind of stuff. But I still feel like as a coach, it's my duty to be, like Cam said earlier, a bridge where it's like the, the more simple I can make it for my players, the better. Because – in my opinion, my job is to make them their own best coach. It's, it's not for me to be the best coach, you know what I mean? It's all about whoever I'm working with. And once again, it doesn't matter if it's whatever, a, a major leaguer or a, a, a little leaguer. I'm going to treat them the same. I'm going to give them the same focus, the same attention. And I think on the art side of the game, we're going to see more of that kind of stuff coming back, you know, mm -hmm. It's going to be one of those things. I mean, if I'm predicting a trend, it's still going to be one of those things where you're going to have teams that are very science-based. You're going to have teams that are more art-based. You're going to have a mix of both, I think, in a perfect world. You know, we have guys like, guys like myself maybe sitting and talking with somebody who's analyzing strictly based on numbers and uh, boxes that they like to categorize guys as. Um, for me, I'm very big on instinct and individuality. I think guys are, I call it the snowflake theory, but each guy's different. What makes them tick is different. How they think about things are different. How they handle stress is different, you know, physically, mentally, all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So as much as we can, I think being aware of both sides, it's that, that yin-yang, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, I like there it is. The art kind of, that's just one way to look at it, but. I think we'll see a merge. I, I hope that's what I would hope for, anyways. Great points, you know. Um, and at the highest level, I think a lot of time resources has a lot to do with that, you know. And I'm going to bring up the A's, for example. Not the most, not the best. You know, don't have access to the most resources in the world, but they end up putting teams together. 
you know, that, that, that win, you know, and they can't afford to keep any of the guys, but, you know, they're forced to do, to, I guess, uh, think outside the box a little bit, even though they came up with the uh, whole, what's the term, billy ball, or what, what is it? Yeah, the, uh, ball. Ball. Yeah, 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 they pretty much created that, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking outside the box at that time. Well, I think it's like the old phrase, right? But do what you can where you're at, you know, the best you can with where you're at with what you've got, where yeah. it's like, you know, limited resources to the Oakland athletics is relative to, let's say, limited resources of fuel factory, right? Like they're still dealing with some a relative amount, but yes, compared to like LA or New York or some of these huge markets, you know, I think it's that. I, I think also it's just more of a, especially a blending of cultures in today's game too, that I love. I always, I love getting to know guys from other places, guys that had different upbringings than me, guys who wore a different lens, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, part of what we're seeing in the game too, is we're seeing guys from, from other places kind of bring their, their mix to the bag too, you know? And I think, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on where you're from, obviously, but if you're talking resources, um, I would imagine if you're on an island somewhere, there's probably not, you know, 50 Rapsodos sitting on that island. There's probably guys that are developing talent without the technology. So there's still a, you know, it, it's to me, I, I relate it to martial arts a lot of times because I've always been fascinated with. And then I've the more I learn about martial arts, the more I'm humbled by it just because there's so much, you know, and there's so many different styles where it's like even – you know, if, if you're practicing a drill and you're in a stance and, you, and you're in a, let's say, a training stance, square horse or whatever, it's totally different than if, if you're on the street and you're in a, you know, a fighting stance. So to me, it's the same thing when I'm training guys, like you guys were talking about earlier, right? Like teaching the body how to decelerate or, or maybe um, getting the body to be able to adapt to a certain thing. Yeah. There's training stance, but that training stance isn't exactly like I'm going to say, hey, now when you go in the game, you should do this. It's yeah. like we have a relative theory of what we're working on. But then at the end of the day, all the technology in the world, all the whatever modalities of training you have, the only thing that matters to me is teaching my guys how to get outs. Yes, yeah. I want them safe. Yes, I want them to throw hard. All of that fun stuff that, that we do as coaches but my bottom line, if I had one bottom line, it's get him out. Yeah. And I don't care how you do it, you know, and I'm not necessarily categorize like you have to be a four seam fastball, high rider guy and you're a curveball guy. Yeah. Like there's different blends, right? There's, there's many different ways to work that zone up and down, in and out, you know, change speeds, all the fun stuff. That's, that's the stuff that I love. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. just that. A velocity program you know that's my thing that i see a lot of times where i'm like okay yes i understand people are training to gain something right but velocity is the only thing that we're going to learn i'm failing you as a coach there's so much more to getting out it's not just velocity also how long do you want to play this game if i'm talking about longevity do i want maybe the kid who was texting us earlier to throw five miles an hour harder I'm pretty sure if his body was ready to throw five miles an hour harder, he'd throw five miles an hour harder, right? Sometimes you start adding, you know, and it's putting a cart before the horse to use an old phrase, but it's like allow guys to mature how they mature. Part of that's the whole, you know, you're talking about Juco versus D1 and some of that stuff with Cam and it. That's the stuff to me too. I love Juco baseball. You know, I've, I've coached at a couple of different Juco's. I did play D1, but watching guys develop everybody develops at a different rate so like the day that you start comparing yourself let's say as a 16 year old to every other 16 year old you're doing yourself harm in my opinion because you start comparing and it's it's not about them yeah. it's, it's literally only about you and i think the sooner that you can realize that the better because you're going to take ownership you're not going to sit back and start to blame this guy or that guy, I got this opportunity. I didn't get this. You know, it's like, let's throw all that stuff out and focus on things we can control. Yeah. But I could, uh, uh, Jamar said preach, but yeah, I could, yeah, I, right. I, I could <laughs> on that one, just because I see so many kids that, that either a settle for what everybody else does or 
they compare themselves to people who are either A, more talented than them, B, been doing it longer than them, or let's say they have more resources. Whatever those things are, all those other aspects are out of your control. I'd rather have a guy that says, hey, with my body weight conditioning, I'm going to get just as fit as anybody because I'm going to outwork or I'm going to, you know, whatever. Or, hey, I can go out and long toss or throw into a net or I don't necessarily have to have my hand held through this process. You know, and I think that's something we see with today's, uh, some of today's younger guys where it's like, everything they do they post on instagram yeah. you know it's like cam and i were talking about this the other day it's like if i post one thing on instagram during the day you can bet i did 99 other things that you're not gonna and it's not anything against you it's just like hey I, number one i'm working on things because yeah. i have to to grow and develop yourself as a, as a coach i think we owe it to our athletes to continue to grow but then b too it's like it's not about just saying hey look at me in my opinion, you know, it, there's more, more than that's going on right there, but you got me fired up. Yeah, man. As always, great points. Great points. Um, if you have time to stick around, I'm bringing Coach Wesley out next. Um, yep. you have time to stick around, so our pitching question will pop up, and I'll bring you up, and we can uh, cover, address that question. Yeah, I'm going to keep it rolling. Thanks for having me. All right, man. No problem. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk later, hopefully. Sounds great. Absolutely. All right. So, Coach Wes, you're on deck. And then, Jamar, you're following up. So, here we go. Thanks again, Coach Zing.